to the budget and finance uh, budget work sessions. Today, we have specifically set aside time for Ms. Shannon Hall to be here with us. Thank you, Shannon, for being here. I really do appreciate it from her human resources. She's going to kind of go over the pay plan for budget year 2024. And then everyone here from budget and finance who's on the committee that's here can ask questions of her if they don't understand what's going on or if they can't understand or if they need more answers. And so Shannon said she'd be more than happy to answer questions. And so that's all we're going to do today. I don't know if it'll take us 30 minutes or two and a half hours. Hopefully not two and a half, but we'll see. So anyway, so Shannon, thank you for being here and I appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Um, so as Chair Roten said, here to we put together a brief PowerPoint to kind of walk through this. Hopefully some of this is familiar to everyone. There are no major changes to the compensation structure we've had now for 30 years, I would say. Um, so no major changes. This is going to look very familiar, but kind of talk you through um, what our recommendations are, what that process has been that then leads to the council and then their determination on the, the final determination for the budget. So um, with that, I am going to um, turn this mostly over to Leslie Schuster. She's our lead compensation expert here in Metro HR. I also have with me Mike Taylor, who's the assistant director over workforce management, but we're all here to help support you. And I'll let Leslie as our lead kind of walk you through kind of the high points of the recommendations, the data points we considered when we made our recommendation. Uh, remind you what the commission made as a recommendation and then what the mayor has proposed in the current budget. Does that sound fair? Um, so every year we present to the Civil Service Commission recommendations for um, the pay plan for civil service employees. And our goals each time when we recommend any improvements are to make sure that our plans are fair and equitable, that we're able to recruit and retain employees so we can maintain appropriate staffing levels to provide our services and that any changes are fiscally responsible. Um, changes need to be affordable or we won't be able to um, meet our other two goals. The types of changes we recommend to pay plans usually are an across the board increase or a cost of living adjustment. And these are adjustments to the pay ranges themselves and to um, employees actual pay within the range. Um, another increase that employees typically get are merit increases. And these are um, based on performance. They would be a step increase in a pay grade with steps or um, an open range increase for pay ranges that are just a min and max and employees can be paid anywhere in the range. So the step increases, those merit increases are built into the structure. So you're either on step one, two, three, um, up through step 10. Um, the open range pay grades, you can be paid anywhere in the range. And what we recommend is um, a budgeted number for a pool for departments to use to distribute those merit increases amongst those employees. Um, and not necessarily part of each pay plan implementation, but our structure has a lot of opportunities for other increases such as promotions. Um, we have career paths, our structure's very hierarchical, um, and we have um, career paths in different classification series where employees can move up through grades as they gain experience and responsibility in their jobs. Some of the economic indicators we look at when we're determining what to recommend for a, an across the board or a cost of living adjustment are the consumer price index. Um, the metric we use for that comes from Bureau of Labor Statistics. We look at the CPIU which is all urban consumers in all areas, all items. Um, and that measures the average change in the price of things over time. Um, another index measures the cost of labor, um, the employment cost index. This measures what employers are paying their employees. So it would measure how pay is increasing 
um, from different employers over time. And employers would use this index to try and make sure that they're maintaining their competitive position in the market. Um, pay is becoming more transparent now. It didn't always used to be um, and still isn't fully. So in, in the private sector especially, employers don't necessarily know what their competition is paying. So this is also put out by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and it's a way that employers can see in their own labor market what are other employers doing with their pay um, on the aggregate. So we would use those to recommend um, a cost of living adjustment and we also recommend what the um, merit budget should be for the open range. This chart shows the cumulative increases over the last about 10 years for the CPI, um, the Employment Cost Index in the government sector and in the southern region, Metro COLAs only, and Metro COLAs and merit increases. Most employees receive both the COLA and a merit increase. So you can see that over time, cumulatively, we are keeping pace with inflation with just the COLAs Metro employees have gotten and we're exceeding CPI when you also include the merit increases that most employees get. Um, this is a chart showing what the CPIU was for the calendar year and then what the Metro recommended COLA was following that year. So typically in, say, 2016, the calendar year, the increase in CPI was 1.3%, and then we would recommend um, a cost of living adjustment, and that year that was 2%. So we respond to the previous calendar year, recommend a COLA for the effective 7-1 of the next year. And if you look at the cumulative total, we are very close. And it doesn't necessarily match what the CPI was for the calendar year. In many cases, it's higher. And again, this is just the simple chart just with CPI cumulative increases since um, 2013, so starting 2014, what that increase was, and up through the recommended for this year, 2023. Cumulatively, we're keeping pace with CPI and including the additional merit increases also, we're in very good shape. Um, these next couple of pages show uh, actual increases in employee pay for full-time employees that are currently in these jobs. So office support rep, office support specialist are uh, common classifications that many departments have. Administrative services officer is a generic professional administrative classification. And you can see the actual increases over one year, five years, and 10 years. And compare that to the top two rows. That's what you would expect if employees were only getting the cost of living adjustment or they were getting just the cost of living adjustment plus whatever that merit increase for that year. So you would expect last year for a one year increase if employees got both the four and a half percent cost of living adjustment and a three percent merit increase they would get seven and a half and you see most employees exceed that that's likely because they've gotten promotions over that time um, especially when you look ahead 
um, well, back for the five and 10 year increases, that it exceeds what you would expect for boys just getting the COLA and the merit increase. Uh, these are for clerical administrator positions, some of the common um, positions in trades and in public safety, um, police, fire, corrections, and uh, 911 operators. And again, this is the average actual increase for full-time employees that are in these classifications today. So the recommendation that we made to Civil Service Commission included a 4% COLA, 3% for the merit increases. So that would be a total of 7% for the total growth over the year. And we also recommend adjustments to individual classifications where we know we have issues in recruiting or retention or internal equity. Um, so we would make additional recommendations to adjust classifications or pay ranges further beyond just what we're recommending for the cost of living increase. Um, and for this year, most of that was police and fire, um, also the crime lab, water lab, um, and other individual classifications where we know we have issues. Um, these next couple of slides show who's covered by these pay plans. Um, civil service employees, of course, a lot of departments that aren't civil service also use our pay grades and classifications. Um, so there's about 8,700 employees that are covered by the general pay plan or the police and fire. Um, about 6,100 of those are on step plans. Uh, about 2,500 are on open range pay grades. And then we do have some elected positions that are part of the pay plans also. And those are generally just one rate. Most employees do receive the cost of living adjustment. Um, there are some very limited exceptions to that. Um, elected officials, Many elected officials receive their pay that's set by the state of Tennessee or can only be changed at the beginning of a term. So we would make an adjustment when it's a new term begins, but they wouldn't typically get one every year the way we would adjust um, other types of jobs. Um, employees in a pool status, which are generally like sports officials at parks that would be paid by the game or the event, um, like an instructor. Um, some part-time seasonal positions don't receive the COLA, um, sometimes grant funded. If the grant doesn't allow for a change, they would not be eligible. There's very few of those. Um, or employees who are redlined and paid above the maximum for their grade would not be. Um, and again, all these changes we recommend, we're trying to meet our objectives to be fair and equitable, be able to recruit and retain employees and be fiscally responsible. That's it, Chair Roten. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. And uh, I've got nine people here from budget and finance and a few here not from budget and finance. And they've already started throwing up hands. So uh, I've sat through this. This is my, I think, seventh time to sit through this. So uh, I probably won't be asking a lot of questions, but there are people who are newer and do have a lot of questions. So uh, the first hand I saw was council. I can't. She's pointing. Go ahead. Uh, council Member Druffle, you're recognized. Thanks. Uh, good presentation. Uh, we, we're hearing there's some compression in the police department um, from history. Can you sort of comment on that and help us understand that a little bit more clearly? Compression in the police department? Yeah, in terms of how the the uh, uh, positions, when they restarted, um, we there was compression in the positions. Mm -hmm. So when we do have 
increases to what we call market increases. So if we're looking at individual jobs that need an adjustment beyond what, uh, to what the regular across the board is. If the pay range is going up quite a bit more than the normal increase, so whatever the cost of living adjustment is, the way employees are, the way we implement that is employees go into the new range at uh, the step that is closest to the across the board increase to their current pay that's closest to that but not less. So metro wide, everyone gets the cost of living adjustment plus whatever's necessary to put them on a step in their new range. So an employee who is at the maximum, for example, mm -hmm. they would get 4% COLA and then whatever the step is in the new range, which is higher, that is closest to that, but not less. And that might be step nine. It might be step eight. It's a higher rate of pay. It's just a lower step than they were. So everyone's pay is increasing. They just may not be at the same step. So the senior positions, I guess that and that's where the concern is the compression of senior positions um, may not get the same. Can you help me a little bit more in terms of the same percentage increase? It wouldn't be identical. It depends on how the new pay structure is set up, but it would be in this example, 4% plus whatever's necessary to put them on the next step. Okay. And it could be, and they would get another 1% with that. They might get another two. The steps are 3% apart. Sure. So it would be anywhere between. One and three. Right. Okay. So have you seen that? Some of the feedback we're getting from the police, which we really want to make sure we take care of. We're, we're Council Member Truffle, just from. Would you turn and talk toward the microphone since oh. this is being shown you know, you're live? You were kind of Thank you. Back. Yep. Uh, it, it, we're getting some feedback, and we really want to make sure that, uh, as you're saying, equitable uh, support. We want to make sure the senior police officers, which have a tremendous um, experience level, that we weren't able to do it. Um, have you seen or can you comment possibly on where their concern is um, as that compression occurs, as some of the senior levels. I know you just expressed some of that, mm -hmm. but um, we've gotten that fairly, fairly consistently feedback on that. So, Well, the employees who are at higher steps before the change are still higher than the other employees. So, but it does cause a little bit of compression right. because they might slide back in the the step they're on but the pay is higher is, is there any way to correct that well just yeah <laughs> exactly I, I she did a great job yeah right and, uh, cost and sometimes a very significant cost have you evaluated that cost it it depends on what the change is. It, it will always depend on how much the range is increasing from currently and how much the recommended COLA is. Okay. Is there a possibility of evaluating that in, in any fashion in a relatively quick term? Well, there definitely is going to be next year for sure. And, and compression for me, when I hear compression, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole at all. Um, that would be dangerous. But compression can happen a couple different ways. It can happen vertically right. and horizontally in compensation. And this is where I go, I, I leave it kind of there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, Leslie, um, I need you to take the reins because this is what she is absolutely the expert on. Um, to Leslie's point, though, I think sometimes the COLA, right, if, if we were going to do less of COLA, we would have a much bigger panic attack because then it would be like this compression is really magnified. It's unsustainable, right. correct. Um, one of the budget items that is in the budget before you today that we have been priming and asking for um, in advance for a couple of years, and it is there um, this year, is that we have an external compensation consultant come and assist us because at least every eight to 10 years, we should really have somebody come and took a, take a very big look under the hood. Compensation philosophies vary. They change, best practices emerge, 
And this is a really great opportunity for us to be able to have somebody really come and look at our structure and make significant recommendations because our job is to hopefully determine what are new emerging best practices. What are ways that we can, and the last time we did this was in 2014, um, and then usually there are significant recommendations that come out of that that we will then likely implement um, with your assistance through the budget process for likely two or three years, maybe even four beyond. Um, and I do think that part of the compensation structure that we have, new and emerging um, structure, both our pay range is wide enough. Should they be more wide or should they be more narrow? Should we go to market rates on certain classifications? Because I, for us, we're not a one-size-fits-all employer. We employ everybody, and much like we've shown you, sometimes steps are really great for particular job classifications and series. Sometimes open range for more professional classifications is appropriate. Market rates, a new emerging one in, in public sector as well, that uh, in, in public safety specifically, that's starting to emerge with a mem number of our peers like Denver or Indianapolis. So our objective is not only for them to come look at a whole bunch of our classifications, and public safety is one that we particularly are always keeping our eye on, but I think also take a huge look at our compensation philosophy, our structure, how should we be doing it? Maybe, and, and again, I don't expect that they're, I mean, they could come back and say, this one philosophy is going to be great for everybody. But our experience so far is that cert, like certain markets of our big compensation structure are best suited for a step or for an open range. Some may be best suited for a market adjustment. Some may be better suited with um, a particular range that was wider or more narrow. And I think that's going to help us address a lot of these compensation uh, issues that we're having or the compression issues, whether they're vertical, whether they're horizontal. So it is in the budget. There is a budget request for HR. It is desperately for this. And we absolutely expect experts to help us figure out a way to better address that in the years to come. Okay, so you have a consultant's uh, report or um, a request to, to pay for a consultant to do all we do. what we're it just requesting. This budget. And, and, and I would assume that it's relative to other cities in other similar sized cities as you were doing this? We're going to ask them, I mean, we certainly are going to ask them to look at other public sector cities. In, in fact, are we measuring ourselves against the right ones, right? Mm -hmm. Should we be looking at different ones? You know, we're in a unique situation, especially in the last 10 years where our star is rising. You know, we had kind of the slow steady boom in Nashville, I think, for the 30 years prior to that. But um, we are asking them to take a look and make recommendations at everything, okay. kick the tires everywhere, but it's Thanks. for all of those. Yeah, things. if you listen to Chief uh, Drake, I, I think the one comment he makes is we're competitively nationally when we do this, and, and that's one of the values is I think we do a great job uh, as our chief and how they're recruiting uh, and their support, and I think our support too, but I think um, I'm sure the consultant will work with that. But thank you for your notes. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilmember Benedict to recognize. Thank you, Chair. Oh, just one second. I'm sorry. I, I think Berkeley, it, you're, right. you can go, but I think uh, Berkeley and Councilmember Johnston were next, and I've got Councilmember Gamble. Is there anybody else who has raised their hand that I have not seen? Okay, so I think I've got everybody. I've just got a couple of clarifying questions sure. from the presentation. Councilmember Benedict, you're right now. Thank you, Chair. Um, going to slide three. Um, in the last 30 years, budgets have included funding for merit increases in all but five years during recession and pandemic. I just want to make sure that's an and and an and and an and. Or are those five years inclusive of the, and what risk can we, can you, I see the next slide where it shows one of these, it shows the growth, but I just wanted to understand exactly how many years that is. Recession was the four years, 2009, 10, 11, 12, where there are no merit increases um, or COLAs. And then in 2020, we did have a 1% COLA, but no merit increases that year. So 10, so then 10 years in total out of 30, is that right? The four, four that we just mentioned, and then 2020. So, so, really yep, so 10 or five total. Five, five total. total. Okay, yes. cool. That's what I was curious. Okay, thank yes. you. That was the clarification I wanted to get. Okay. Um, and then the next thing is on the couple of slides later, I'm sorry they're not numbered, but the Metro actual increases slide. 
the one-year increase, the five-year increase, and the ten-year increase, is that five-year increase basically, so 20%, I'm looking at the office support rep first line there. So that 20%, is that basically 4% per year over five years, or is that the 7.8% increases to 20% at the end of the fifth year? So the five-year increase, we looked at their pay today and their pay five years ago. And what's the difference? It's not necessarily. It's not evenly. Even got it. Attributed. It's not looking to the future. It is looking it's to the five years past. ago and 10 right. years past. Okay. Yeah. And yet, as you know, the COLA clearly varied significantly. So those are going to drive, you know, big pushes of when pay increase, like, you know, four and a half last year when there was a COLA for 1% another year means that their pay would have not grown equally over those five years, if that makes sense as well. It does. Okay. Absolutely. I wanted to make sure the public sees these yeah. clarifying questions on this. So thank you for all of that. And then I, the last question I have is about the red line, the above max. So does that mean that, so maybe, um, name the position that you know once their pay reaches x they're not going to receive anything or will they receive just merit and not if color? they're paid above the maximum that's when we label them as redlined and they would not receive an increase unless the range catches up with them so as the rate we increase the ranges whenever there's a cost of living adjustment so if the range would go up 4%, and if the max now catches up with them, then they would get an increase to stay at the max. But if the range, if they're still above, then they would not get an increase until the range catches up. And in that case, we're talking about like maybe on two hands in the whole organization. So okay. That's, there's, okay. I think it's just like a full disclosure, okay. but cool. it doesn't really apply to many people. Yeah. You, I was wondering what the retention issue might have been around that. So thank you. That is a, 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 a molehill. So I'll, um, not a mountain. I think that's it, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I was uh, asked, I don't want to say it was all me, but I was asked to ask, did you have a birthday this weekend? Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you. Happy I, birthday. I did, and on June 7th, we're having a party. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So, Council member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you. Just, uh, I just want to get my vocabulary straight. I think in terms of charts, as everyone knows, and, and so when you talk about range, classification, and step, can you draw a box for me and, and show me what those, what those are? Just visually, I can. I can if I can find the internet, because I know I Shannon, you, you you've supplied yes. those before. The, it's very helpful. The beautiful pay plan books right. that are available online under salary system on any subpage okay. of Metro Human Resources mm -hmm. on Nashville.gov. Give us a second, really quick. We can pull it up. Gotcha. All right. Do I need to just end, or can I find it without? While well, we're waiting, Councilmember Allen, I notice you have my favorite. You have numbers written on you, which so, means that you did something this weekend that I, I used to love doing. I so did, I did a super mini spent triathlon and I won in my age group. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm old enough that I was the only one in my age group. But, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what counts. She and just I made I my turning. For a year or two and then I discovered they're really hard to scrub off. They so. are very hard to scrub off. That's why I noticed. It's that. coming up. So <laughs> Council, Council Member Allen just made my accomplishment of turning 50 look really bad. <laughs> and I beat some 45-year-olds. So, right. so do we, okay. Um, and the reason I ask that is just, I'm just trying to understand when we, when we talk about the steps and the colas and the, and the 3% and the compression, um, I, I mean, if, for the people that are listening, just understanding the difference between changing classifications and whether that's a horizontal move or a vertical move is all. While she's looking, I do have one other question I wanted to ask. In the inflation versus growth charts, which was the several different colors of lines, it, it looked like the CPI and the Metro um, COLA yes. hit this year. Is that... Do you know what's a better metric, the, the corresponding metric that's also in there? Um, will you go to the chart? You'll have, actually have numbers. It was one of the slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That one. If you see them totaled, that's what you're seeing on that bar. People, I know people can see that in different ways. We also put the numbers on there as well. Gotcha. 
So if you see, um, when you total the last 10 years, uh, we're within two tenths of a percent. So CPI, uh, CPIU over the past 10 years and Metro's COLA cumulative over those same 10 years. And that is with gotcha. the 8% because we obviously are going through historic um, inflation right now. Um, so this year, um, for which we made our recommendation, it does have an 8% CPIU, which is correct. Gotcha. Um, okay. but, because but that doesn't necessarily mean that then the trend is going to continue and next year our Metro COLA will be lower. That's not what that... I mean, I just watch those lines and go, that it looks like a bad... <laughs> yeah, we, we've been above, we've been above mm -hmm. the CPI with our COLA every year, and then this year we hit. Mm -hmm. Or yes. that's, but that's the 10-year trend is what you're saying, and that's yes. the math that we do to try to be at yes. that point. And okay. sometimes on that chart, um, I think there's one year where we match. Um, usually we're not significantly off, but they sometimes do differ. Okay. Okay, and then... Um, Similar to the question that I'm, I'm hoping we can get the vocabulary on range. When you say 3% merit increase for STEP, mm -hmm. again, that sort of goes down to what the steps are. That, that is related to how many years you've been working, correct? And so if you've been working, if you pass your evaluation, which most do. Okay. Yeah. So after, after you put in another year, then you automatically get the 3%. You go to the next. You go to the range. next. Well, and it depends yeah. on where you are in the range. Yes. Well, I was saying for the first, for most, and public safety is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, so on public safety, there so there are ten steps throughout the range. Hopefully, we will pull this up in a second. Um, for public safety, they get they're eligible for the merit step increase every year for the first ten years. I gotcha. Um, for the rest of the government. Um, it's usually you're eligible for the merit step if you're on a step um, each year for the first five years. And then your six through ten, it's every other year. Okay. But public safety is different in that way. Public safety, they are eligible. They don't have to skip a year in year six through ten. They get to go all the way through for the first ten years. Hey, Rosie, we just don't know how, how to. How do I change what I'm sharing? <laughs> we have up the Internet. We just can't. Okay, so for, for, for general government, then every two years you get that 3%. So Once you get to year 6 through 10. So there will be people who get a 4% raise that are in between show. those and people that will get a 7% raise. Correct. Okay, that's, that's helpful to know. Right. And then there was there's a, a terminology that we've been getting written about that's regression, which is similar to the compression question that council member. Reverse slotting. Reverse. I don't know what reverse slotting is. I, I mean, we... There's slotting, the way we have slotted for 30 years, uh, we slot for COLA and future pay groups. Um, I know that um, a number of the unions have recently in the past couple of years been asking about slotting step for step, which is a different methodology. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what they have been interested in. That is something we have not done. Like I said, we've been doing the same slotting for 30 years. Um, and it slots for COLA and future growth, which is kind of a little bit more of a balanced fiscal <laughs> approach to that. Slotting step for step um, would sign would definitely drive cost, right? Because you would get bigger increases if you slotted step for step. Um, we have not we have not costed something like that. We did once. Um, that would be moving few, the whole box up, right? Uh, we did a few years ago. I'll give you the example that we did. Um, Police officer two was one of the few, I think it might have been our 2020, our um, COVID year. They're one of the few folks that got an adjustment in the pay plan that year because we were very uncertain, I think all of us, where we were headed. Um, but they were obviously also having really significant struggles, both from a recruit and retention standpoint. So we moved them up a grade and they said, we used our normal slotting methodology and um, FOP had asked, could you tell us what it would cost if we um, did step for step rather than the normal slotting methodology? And when we did that, then our slotting methodology, which would give them the step up but not slot step for step, was the cost of that change just for police officer two, no other classification of police, was I think $2.1 million. Um, but if we slotted step for step, it would have taken that same change. Slotting step for step would have been $8 million. Gotcha. So 
um, slotting is part of the implementation, not necessarily part of the pay plan, which is really uh, our compensation structure for the past 30 years is on a balance and an intersection of market adjustments, cost of living adjustments, and merit. Not all structures are like that, and there's plenty of totally acceptable structures that look different than that. Gotcha. But uh, as we all know, and I think council knows, because it's hard to kind of dig your way out, uh, in 2020 when we only did the 1% COLA and then this one police adjustment, but we didn't do any merit, it kind of collapses a little bit of the pay plan. It makes those compression issues worse, and then it takes you several more years to kind of dig out of that, and employees really feel that. So part of our recommendations, because the intersection of our compensation structure is really built on all three, um, is that we are properly recommending all three. Gotcha. The last thing I would want to do is introduce an implementation plan that made the pay plan unaffordable to the council. That would be a recipe for disaster um, because that's not how our compensation structure is built. And the last thing I'd want, I mean, you guys have difficult jobs, right? Having to determine how to use the money, right? Our job is to recommend appropriate pay for our pay structures. So that's what we do. Um, but if we are implementing something in a unbalanced way, it could force your hand in your inability to fund a pay plan. And that would be really catastrophic and take power away from the council that I don't think is contemplated. And it would be really catastrophic to the employees that are impacted by it. Got so it. ours has been the same one we've used for 30 years. It's a very balanced approach. And it's appropriate for the compensation structure we have, which is market adjustments, COLA, and merit. But if if we didn't have that same compensation structure, slotting step for step may make a lot of sense. It just doesn't make a lot of sense in the structure that we have for right now. Okay. But it is something, this, even though we've slotted the same way for 30 years, this has absolutely become a much bigger um, pain point that have been raised by our union partners. So we are absolutely going to ask that it be studied, make recommendations in the with the external consultant next year because this is definitely even though that hasn't changed for us it has definitely become a bigger pain point and maybe this maybe we need a different compensation structure because needs change right so that's kind of where we are now but for right now we want to make sure that we don't take that power away from council if i'm implementing a plan that then puts a pay plan like a pay plan at 120 million that would be very irresponsible of me would take power away from the council or the mayor to fund a pay plan, and that's not good for employees at all. Yes, so, thank you. So, just very quickly, and then mm -hmm. then I'm done with my time. What we see here is the P501, P502, P503. If I'm a policeman, you're one, two, and three. Where, where, how do I move through this grid? So, you would start as a police officer trainee at PS. It's kind of small. I had to do a quick screenshot. No, that's great. <laughs> so, PS01. This is a police officer trainee. This is currently. So you would start at this rate. There, you can see there's only one step. They're going to be paid this much while they're in the academy, so less than six months. Then they would move to police officer one for their probationary period, which is six months. Then they move to police officer two at step one. So PS3 is the pay grade for police officer two. And then each year, they would move up a step. So one year later, they're at step two. One year later, they're at step three. And then when, if they promote, so you have a police officer to who's going to move to sergeant. They, you count up two steps and then you slot in to the step closest to that, but not less. So, and sergeant is PS5. So, if you're promoting to a sergeant, you're going to count up one, two. So, you look for 77, and you would uh, be here. Gotcha. And then you move up through this range. After a year, you're here, and a year. That's very helpful. Thank you. So, you don't just go straight down, and you don't always go back right. to step you, one. Okay. When you're in the grade, you move over, and then when you promote, you move up. Gotcha. Or, Back yeah. to the closest pay. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for ex sure. explaining that. All right, Chair, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Allen, and congratulations on your victory. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> it was a proud moment. Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, the mic. 
How did that turn on? Did you turn it on? Yeah, the gas behind you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, can I, I just want to start with COLA because I think um, it can get really confusing when we start um, throwing lots of words in like COLA and merit and you know, ranges and all this kind of stuff. The, so the cost of living adjustment is different than merit, yeah. period. And so um, I just want to make that very clear. So you've got your hourly range or you've got your salary, you know, or salary amount, but, but COLA is on top of that. So I wanted to ask if you go to whatever the slide is that has this chart. Oh, I'm going to mess you up having to go back. Okay. into your thing. We're going to figure it out. We'll figure it out. So, um, where is the 2023 number? The, like you've got from 2013 to 2022, but we're looking at, we're looking at a budget for FY24. So we have the data for the, for the, what, what the CPI U for 2023 was and what we actually did for COLA. So where is that in that chart or where, what is that number? in this table yeah i mean it's clearly not there i'm asking you what the, what's the number oh, it is there it's so this is where so we do like for the calendar year right 2023 we're only just a few months into so the cpiu for 2022 for which in spring so of fy 23, 23 that's what okay that makes better sense yes that makes better sense. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And so this was all based off of CPIU, right? When you're looking at COLA and how to determine it, you're, the, the main, the index that you're basing that off of is CPIU, right? Obviously. It's a very important index, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this year, what is CPIU? And for, well, let me ask you this. Why, why are you using CPIU versus CPIW? Because state and federal government uses CPIW. I'm just wondering, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just asking, at least you're con consistent using CPIU. I'm just wondering why you use that one instead of CPIW. Yeah, precedent and to be consistent. It's Well, and it's typically, like truthfully, it's been one of the highest. I mean, I mean, God's honest truth. That's why we've used you. By using you, we are able to capture our big East and West Coast partners. So traditionally... For us, we've used CPIU for a long time, but like I, I think for a long time, this has been one of the higher indexes because we were able to capture partners like LA, New York, Chicago, San Fran. Um, the the indexes, like the other ones, I guess we could have used that we have not always used would be for the South or for the state based on our size, and where those get categorized into like a, a sub a and a bc group and so those have not always been as favorable but this has kind of consistently been the one we've used and has traditionally been one of the higher so cpiu has traditionally actually been much not much less but less than cpiw so i'm passing that around i have the historical data from 2000 whatever it is 13 or something like that um just in the past about four months has consistently been a little bit lower not by, not by much, but CPIU is typically higher. doesn't matter. Um, so this year, how did you come up with 4%? Because last year, obviously, we're half of what CPIU was. Or we're going to, again, be half of what CPIU is, or maybe le even less than half. Not sure I'm following what you're saying. So you're recommending 4% COLA, correct, for this year? We are. But CPIU is what this year? The CPIU for the same, like for that time is 8%, which has us tracking neck and neck. But and then, and then next year, we, we can't speculate. I mean, I guess we could if we went back to multi-year pay plans. Of, we don't speculate on what CPIU is for the future. So we're looking, that data is usually available in the month following whenever it's determined. So we are literally looking at usually the most recent 12 months worth of CPIU data before we have to present a pay plan to the commission the beginning part of April. So where was it that the um, Civil Service Commission was coming up with 7%? What were they basing that on? I'm not, I'm, I'll just perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure where they are, but to your point, and that has not been disclosed yet, I mean, it has in the pay plan worksheets I've 
forwarded to council office that hopefully you have. Um, we did recommend 4%. By charter, the commission gets to study and offer their recommendation. And they did recommend a 7% COLA. Um, so they differed from our recommendation. And then under the charter, the finance director and the mayor get to propose and then include in the budget their recommended component as well. So I, there, was, there was definitely discussion. I, that's, that's what not, I'm asking you is what was that discussion? Because I can't imagine where, why the Civil Service Commission would say 7%. Um, and we're coming back down to the 4%, there, has, there had to have been a reason, uh, a reason for it. So I'm just asking, um, and, and those uh, meetings, for whatever reason, are now not online, and you have to do a public records request for them, but... Um, so is, that's, just you know, um, that was a legal determination, not an HR determination. So all benefit board meetings and civil service commission meetings are publicly broadcast, but they're not on the YouTube channel because sometimes we are discussing sensitive employee information and the legal department has advised that they don't want those on YouTube. So I just want to full disclose that. But, but I years you, prior, just co to continue with that, because years prior, the very sensitive information would happen at the end of the meeting, and that's when the cameras would be shut off and, and the recording would be stopped so that people can go back and look at it and not have to do a public records request. Totally agree. What I'm letting you know is I am just the deliverer of this information, and this was something that Metro HR did not determine. So can you par paraphrase how, I mean, I'm sure that meeting was long, but I just still would like to know where they're coming up with 7% um, when, I, e when even 7% doesn't match the 8%. Right. Um, Social Security, I think, is 8.7 or 8.6%. And Social Security is based off of, C now granted, CPIW, but um, this year, 8.7%, I can't see, 8.7%. So it's... Still less. So I can I can tell you, uh, I, I will say that in the discussion when it came out, um, pretty clearly from the beginning of the meeting when they were making the determination, they were absolutely discussing the eight percent CPIU number. I guess where I was a little baffled is that that's been accounted for in our chart and that was before them but i would say they felt like they wanted to go higher and right off the gate i'll be honest they didn't all individually disclose other than this is the number that i feel like is appropriate they weren't necessarily disclosing and but they were talking quite a bit about the cpiu the part and, and again, I'm trying to be as transparent, as honest as possible, because this is also a board that I serve. Um, because the 8% was accounted for, I'm not sure why they were looking towards the 7 or 8%, but it sounded like from the beginning of the meeting um, that several, if not all, of the commission members were feeling like something higher. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I also think as a city and specifically as a government that has a very valued police force, it was a very emotional time. It has nothing to do with the police department, to be honest with you. I'm just trying to figure it out. Because no, it, across the call is across the board. I agree with you, but I will say this. I'm trying to answer your question as honestly as I possibly can. Um, it had been a very emotional month for our city and specifically for um, very brave officers. And I, I, do, I do think that that was possibly playing a role in what they were doing for all employees. I also think that CPI was being discussed at the 8%. And that's, that is the best that I can figure. But my, I think the part that I was confused about was we had accounted for the 8% in this chart and they had that. So based off of just all the way back from 2013. The, the last 10 years. This this chart was in front of them. So I'm wondering why historically, like, so COLA was created, I'm pretty sure, by the federal government in 1975, or at least that's when it, when it went into effect, I believe, and it's based 100% every single year on CPIW, period. Um, and so I'm wondering if best practice is to take an average of the past 10 years not an average, but the cumulative effect, because 
if you're if inflation right now is eight nine percent which it is um an increase in four percent doesn't get us there when, when the whole point is to adjust for the cost of living so in, in a lot of ways i think it's maybe a little bit unfair to say well but in 2016, we gave you a 2% COLA and it really was only 1.3%. So now employees in 2023 are only going to get half of what CPIU is. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Cost of living is not cumulative. It's, an, and it's actually a monthly um, index that we're taking an average in order to effectuate a cost of living adjustment for, for an annual salary or a wage employee to account for that year's cost of living increase. This to me makes absolutely no sense for a cumulative effect because there's, there's employees that aren't even here that were here in 2013, 14, 15. Yeah. So how can you, how can you, so you're justifying a lesser COLA for, in my opinion, for cost savings based off of what's happened the past 10 years. And that's not fair. Well, I think you raised some interesting points. I think, I think part of what we can ask the consultant is, should we be using a different metric? You know, should we be using CPIW? Is that a more appropriate metric? Um, I think it's also worth asking, should we, depending on what metric we are using, should that just be the pass through recommendation? Or to your point, is there some kind of like smoothing method that could occur? I don't, I don't know. I think it's worth asking all of those questions because I understand some of the points that you're raising. And I think those are totally worth asking. So I, our job is just aiming to get it right as best we can. And I totally get your point. And I will, in all fairness, like these are our recommendations. Our job is to recommend pay. And so our part of it effectively is over, right? We've offered our recommendation and the commission chose to do something different. And the council has the right to do something. Different. Right, but I th so I'm just if we're if we're trying to be transparent and we're and we're saying we want to be um, we want to be doing the right thing. I think a lot of times because you're saying it doesn't match you know CPI every year every year, and you're right. Um, but why doesn't it? Because what's happening, in my opinion, is over the course of a few years, we're conflating merit with cola. It's like, well, merit, well, so let's just make up with it, make up for it with COLA, which is completely inappropriate because your merit increase is just that. It's a merit increase. It's built into your step or it's based off of your performance up to 3%, I'm pretty sure, for open range employees. And that's something that you just get every year because apparently it's merit. Look up the definition of merit. But when you're looking at COLA, COLA is specifically about the cost of living. So it was inappropriate in 2015 if the CPIU, and to be honest, let's see, you said CPIW. As long as you're consistent, that's fine with me. I was just interested in why is it CPIU and not CPIW, because most governments, state and federal government, uses CPIW. Doesn't matter. They're, they usually run pretty close to each other. So as long as you're consistent. But it was inappropriate in 2015 to have a, a CPIU of 0.10%. So not even 1%. And we gave them three more percent than that. That's where it evens out because it's based on the economy. It's based on how much is it costing you to live. So having this all over the place, this isn't really a COLA. A COLA is based off of CPI. Pick a, pick a letter, CPIU, CPIW. If it's going to be a cost of living adjustment, it needs to be based on an index and it needs to match that index. If you're not going to do that, this is just completely arbitrary. So... Councilmember Johnson, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying, but the reason why this differs is because the charter allows the commission to pick something different. The, the commission allows, picks something. The charter allows the council to do something different. So in 2015, um, I can tell you when we were emerging from a housing recession, right? I was actually over here with you guys, but I remember this year because this is when I was starting to um, think about HR again. In this particular year, we were emerging after a period of time where employees got very little colas or merit increases because of the housing recession. 
And then our city was exploding, um, much as we had hoped. And so a lot of the trends were showing that our revenues were increasing and employees had gone without for a number of years. So part of the reason why is you saw an improving economy that was on the horizon. Part of it is because the mayor wanted to give more at that time. So that is a higher number because the mayor wanted to give more and propose more, which the mayor has the right to do. And sometimes these colon numbers differ because the mayor can do something different and the council can do something different. And sometimes economic indicators drive part of that good decision making. So I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't fundamentally, I don't know that there's a right or wrong. Like what you're saying makes complete sense to me. But part of the reason why these numbers differ over time is because the charter allows them to differ. They allow the commission to do something different. They allow us to consider economic indicators um, or reward employees who have been going without for several years, which was totally happening in 2015. It allows the council to say, no, we want to use this money differently. And so I think that's the reason why these numbers are not locked step all the time is because it, and I'll tell you, <laughs> I don't know that that's wrong. I, I like that you guys have some power and autonomy because we're not just the entire United States of America. We're Nashville, and that's what you guys are governing. I don't know that there's a right or wrong, but let me tell you, I what you're explaining, I that makes sense to me too. Well, but here, here's why it's a problem: is that when you when you come up with a year in 2020, 2022, and 2023 where inflation is over 8% consistently and you're still back down low, it's hard to explain to employees, well, but for the past 10 years, we're still in line and whatever, and it's kind of all over the place. Well, it's based off of CPU, but clearly not really. It's really kind of what the mayor wants to do, and then the council could come in and change it if they want to, and all this, and so it's literally like, so then what is the answer? So I think, um, you know, we've got, we're paying this million dollars for this pay study. You know, if you're gonna have cost of living adjustments it needs to be tied to something pretty tight within an error of whatever and so does that does it do we need to have a charter amendment or something like that i don't know but this is not the place to make up for because that's not what a cost of living adjustment is if, if you're you, you can't conflate things and say, well, I feel really emotional right now. And so, um, you know, the housing market or whatever it is and say, well, we'll we're just going to increase COLA because we feel like it. Well, I'm just sorry. That's not the way that this works. And so then you get into years like this and we're in a bind because we're getting all of these emails because people don't understand. Well, inflation is 8.7%. And the Civil Service Commission has said to give us 7%, and y'all are only giving us 4%. And the explanation behind it is baloney. Got a better word than baloney that I want to use, and I can't <laughs> use it. Well, it this is just really frustrating. So I, I, when we're talking about pay plans, if, if like, like Council Lady Ellen was saying, let's, let's put these things into boxes because you cannot take COLA and conflate those, conflate that, or bump it up or down because of what's going on and the, whatever. It's, it's got to be something concrete or at least within a, a reasonable error of margin because we're going to have issues like this. Hopefully next year it comes back down. Councilmember Johnson, I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off, but we've got uh, several weeks of budget sessions that I know. We, can, we can discuss all this. And I, I'm sure Ms. Hall, she's well aware of all, I know she's well aware of all these issues. I can move on to my next question. That's all right, because we've had these conversations in years past. So if you so could. I will move on to my next question because I think I've made my point. So um, the, the next thing I want to talk about is reverse slotting. And we do know what reverse slotting is, um, where where you've got step employees and this only applies to step employees because the, those are the steps so you've got people in ps2 whatever that is i don't even know ps2 there's 10 steps in there so if you're five years into ps2 you should be at step five but you've got people that are not in oh thank you are not in step five they're in step three so yes that creates compression but it also will mess up when you say, oh, we're giving people a 10% raise. Well, if they stayed in the correct step, they probably would have gotten a 10% raise. But when they get their paycheck in August 
It's not going to be reflective of a 10% raise or whatever it is that we've promised them because we've reslotted them down. So you've funded the step properly. You've given the step at the 10 or of seven, whatever we've promised, right? And this happened last year with parks maintenance. And that was a total, it was just chaos because they were expecting, hey, we're telling you, we're giving you whatever it was. Let's say it was a 10% raise. It wasn't, but let's just for simplicity purposes, 10%. So they think, oh, great. I'm making $50,000 right now. So, you know, come August, when I get my paycheck, I'm going to make $55,000, but that's not what happened. So they come in and they go, hey, there's something wrong with my paycheck because we're getting 10% raises. Oh, well, sorry. We, um, you got re, you know, reclassified or whatever you call it. And, and you're, you're not on the right step. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like that makes no sense. And there was a lot of just serious, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible for morale. Nobody understood it. I, I've been, I have had this thing explained to me. I can't tell you how many times and I'm not an idiot. And I still am like, that is some complicated stuff when it shouldn't be. You're a step employee. And so it's communicated to them each year. You get a step, which is their built in merit their built-in merit. But you, if you freeze steps, okay, everybody needs to be frozen because you have a recession or whatever. But if you, if you, are, if you are increasing the amount of money that a PS4 step five employee gets, but then you, but then, so that person is expecting that, but then you actually move them down to step three, they're not getting, they're not getting that pay raise. That's not what's actually happening on on their paycheck. It's happening on paper in the steps. But look at their actual paycheck. And that's where the frustration comes. Well, their pay is increasing. Their pay is increasing, but it's not increasing in, by the amount that is being told to them and the amount that's coming out in the state of Metro. That's not happening. Can well, you explain who, who decides when they move from one grade to the next? HR does. We're not talking about moving grades. We're talking about slotting employees for the implementation of the pay plan. That is different than changing grades. Okay, what's the difference between a grade and a step? It's not on the slot. So changing a step, slotting for a right. step, you don't change a grade. No, Changing right. a grade is when and you... I, I didn't say that. Okay. I'm saying if you were a PS04, and you have been a PSO4 for three years, you should be a step three. So next year, they're expecting to go to step four. And they're being told, like Parks was told last year, I mean, this happens, this isn't just police, by the way, this is across the board with our step employees. You're getting a 5% raise or whatever it is. If they stayed in their correct step and moved forward like they should have, they would have seen that reflected on their paycheck. But what happens is they get reclassified back down a step. They stay in the same grade, but they're stepped back. That's not fair. So they get they get the COLA, and then they have to be, it can't be less than, so they're going to move up the a little bit. The COLA is completely different. I don't want to talk okay. about COLA. Well, this mm -hmm. is how it all works together. And to but be it shouldn't, honest, and that's what makes it messed up. Compensation is, it's complicated. It totally is. No, it's being made complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. All I'm doing is telling you how it's done today. And I'm not saying that we can't do it different. What you're talking about is slotting step for step. And that may be appropriate for a different compensation structure. It's not one that is being contemplated in the structure, nor has That's what every single years. employee expects. I'm step one this year. I'm going to be step two next year. I'm going to be step three next three year and four and five and whatever. And, the, and the, we've had frozen steps because, well, we've had a recession. That, not arguing. Don't have the money, recession. I get it. But when you are, when you are saying, hey, look, we've done a pay study, and we realize that PS04 step fours are being underpaid by... 9.6% or whatever it is. So we're going to increase that number, $71,785, $71,785 one cent. We're going to increase that by the 9.6% because we need to get where we need to be to be competitive within the market. Okay, so that step is going up. But what will happen is, so you got your step four people, they're expecting that plus going up to step five, but you're pulling them back down to a different lower step. So the step is getting funded properly. 
the step is getting funded properly, yes. but the person that's in there is being re-slotted down and they're not actually receiving the compensation yes. that's the being told to them. Got it. Yes. No, I agree with you. That's the way it's always been implemented for the past 30 years with us. And so employees, and I'm not trying to anger you, I'm just trying to paint the picture. They will get the COLA plus whatever extra on top of that gets them to the, the next step up. Then they will also be eligible for their merit step, which will then put them on the step beyond that. So they will, they get slotted back, but then they're also going to get the step. So then they're going to move forward again, same year. And then the pay range is going to increase. So their future growth also increases. So the employee will immediately realize, to your point, they will immediately realize the cost of the COLA and whatever it is extra to get them to the next step. They will, within that year, whenever their anniversary date starts, sometimes at 7-1, sometimes it's other dates, will get the merit step to go to the next step. And then they will also have future salary growth, and that's the last part, but not realized as immediately as a step for step would. So is it not disingenuous? For example, can you go, I hate to make you toggle back and forth from, although you seem to be doing it pretty easy, <laughs> uh, where the job titles are where it says office support rep, 7.8%, 20%. So, right. So it's disingenuous, in my opinion, to say that a five-year increase, yes, of the five-year increase for an office support rep, whatever that is in the step, 20%. But when you're re-slotting people backwards, there's not an office support rep, I bet you, that in the past five years their compensation has gone up 20%. That's significant. We'd be broke. It's not happening. The step is getting funded that way. My problem is, if you're going to increase somebody's salary, at least be honest about it. I don't want to hear about how we're increasing a specific step or a specific job title when you're ch because that's not what our employees are realizing. And so we've got all this pretty picture that's being painted in the state of Metro. It's like, oh, God, in the past five years, this has happened. In the past four years, this has happened. And, all of it. and, and people are looking around going, uh... I didn't get a 30% increase in pay in the past, you know, three years who, or whatever the, whatever it was. I wish I'd, I, sh I should have pulled up the actual quotes. That's not actually happening because we're re-slotting people down. So if you're, so what well, my point is, can we at least be honest about what is actually happening to people's paychecks? Because we can have these fun stories all we want to, but when a, when a paycheck comes out in August after we've passed the new budget, and it's not reflective of what they've been told, what's been in the newspaper, what's been on the news, that's when you get really upset people. We don't need upset people in our workforce. Every time somebody calls me with an issue, anybody in this room with an issue, we're not, who are we calling to fix these issues for our constituents? It's our Metro employees. They are the ones that are solving problems. They are the ones that are running this city day and night, 24-7, 365. So at, the, at least can we have some just general respect to be honest with them and say we're increasing the step but we're moving you back or just increase it in as much as we can and keep them on the step because they are expecting to go step for step every year that's how it's been communicated you're saying it's not been done that way for 30 years but every single employee that i've talked to across d different departments expects every single year to go step one two three four five all the way up to ten that's what they're expecting that's what i've always been communicated and now it's like oh well no we just kind of throw you into a step however we Councilman it. johnson i think we've, we've kind of gone downhill well, on this I do, though. Want, I do want to make an observation. But I think, I think no, you answered the question and she's well, made her we point. Have and had, like, I'm going to remind people of math. We have had employees that have these kind of pay increases. This isn't these some academic, actual actual these are actual increases. This isn't the academic exercise that Councilmember Johnson is talking to us about. You guys, Gate, we are proposing to give a seven and a half, what, seven percent increase this year? Last year we gave, what, seven, seven and a half? And a half. And then one year we gave an extra step, so you had another three on top of that. That math alone, we're staring down 18%. So these, this here is not an academic exercise. This is what actual increases are. And you go, oh my gosh, on the trades and labor, why did they go up so much? Because we, we had a big reckoning with trades and labor last year. Like they, we are facing a really tough market for them. And they're some of our lowest paid employees. So I just want to...
I want to make sure that everybody knows, I, and I, let me say, I totally appreciate what Councilmember Johnson's raising. And these are the kinds of questions we're ready to ask. But it may mean that we don't have a merit structure anymore. That's okay. I mean, honestly, we want to have a structure and an implementation that works together and is appropriate and it meets our employees' needs. That's all we're trying to accomplish. But these are real numbers. I want to remind people the COLAs that have been granted, the merit that has been granted every year, those, these are real numbers. All of our employees have been getting. So we're proposing 7% this year. It was 75 last year. That's a 14.5% increase in two years. And so. And Shan, Council Member Vice Chair Gamble, you recognize. Thank you. Appreciate the discussion and the uh, presentation today. My question has to do with if the council decides to increase the COLA uh, to 5%, and that would get, would that get us up to the 8% no. recommendation? So because it, it would be 5% COLA and 3% merit. merit. That does equal eight. <laughs> but as we had in the as we had in the other chart, um, which Councilmember Johnston like did know, like it's not and I totally understand her points as well. The eight percent CPIU has been accounted for. Okay. But because we have given higher colas in years past, right. even with the historic inflation of eight percent for twenty twenty two. The 4% keeps us neck and neck where we're two tenths of a percent lower than the last 10 year average, this chart here. So I would say we have accounted for the 8% and that is part of our recommendation, but it's just our recommendation, right? The council does have the right to do more. The commission had the right to recommend higher, they did. The mayor has a, an opportunity to do something different, which he did. He chose to go with the recommendation that came from HR. Um, you guys have the right to adjust up. So if the, the goal is to meet the 8% by adding them together, then those two numbers equal eight. I, I don't, I, I, don't, I wanna be careful because I respect, I honestly, yeah, I, I, I respect it. the role that you guys have. You guys have a right to do a higher COLA. Right. The COLA differs for all kinds of reasons because the charter allows all these different authorities to do something different. Right. Um, so the, the bottom line is the current budget includes the recommendation, your recommendation for the 8%. Yes. If we were to do more, that, that's our prerogative. Would it, would it impact or cause any type of compression on the merit side or on the step side in any kind of way? No, it might, help, it might help a little. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vice Chair Gamble. Councilmember Toombs, you were recognized. <laughs> I just had a quick clarifying question, which I think may have been answered, but uh, one step represents 3% increase in salary? Okay, that's it. And our ranges are about 30%, so about three on average. Yep. Thank you, Councilmember Tooves, for that nice, brief question. I really appreciate it. You are my hero. Councilmember Porterfield, it's good to see you as always. You're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question won't be as brief, so my apologies. So I was I was listening on the drive over, but there were a couple of a couple of spots where um, it broke up and I couldn't hear something. But I want to start with, I want to get a clarifying question from Councilmember Johnson's points that she was making. Um, can you explain why people are going back in steps? I didn't, I did not understand that piece of it. So our implementation and the way that we slot people um, slots them to account for the COLA plus rounding them because they can't do less. We've never given someone less than the COLA. If we've said we're giving a 4% COLA, it's not fair to do that. So we count, account for whatever COLA is approved, whether it's your COLA, well, it's whatever you guys approve because yours is the budget, um, plus whatever it is to get them the next step. So usually rounding up. So most employees will get like an extra 1%, 2% out of that. Um, and then that would slide them back in the range, but it accounts for COLA and future salary growth. That's how our implementation on slotting goes. The slotting that's been raised by unions that Councilmember Johnson's raised is a slotting step for step. 
which means that you would literally, if you were on step five, you stay on step five and whatever the growth of that is all recognized. So it wouldn't necessarily allow, it, it is certainly more expensive to do it that way. We haven't done it that way, um, but that is something we are gonna ask um, whether or not we should be doing it that way. Or, or is there a better, is there some magical way that somebody else is doing it that's even better? Is there emerging practice? But the, we, this is the right implementation <laughs> for slotting for our compensation structure that does market adjustments, uh, COLA and merit. What we are finding is a lot of our peers do not always do merit or COLA. Like sometimes it is just one or another, or you have, like I said, some of our public uh, safety partners and peers are doing a market rate. So if you look, I don't know what Denver's paying. If, if Denver's paying, 74,000 for starting pay for police officers, that may be an accurate statement, but the rest of the statement is all they're paying police officers is $74,000. There are no steps, there is no slotting, but that whole pain point goes away. But they say this is the market rate for a police officer too, and there is no pay range. If you're a police officer too, whether you've been here for one year or 20, you get the 74,000. So that is a new emerging practice I'm sure that that's something that we're going to ask about. Like we've seen that more of our peers are doing this. Is this right? Would you recommend this for us? So I think these things ebb and change and flow. Okay, let me ask it. Let me ask that question in a different way. Okay. Um, so for example, if someone is uh, a PS3 and they're on, well, I'll go with uh, Councilmember Johnson's same example. PS4 on step four. So that's 71 thousand mm -hmm. so if they move to ps5 are we saying that they stay on step four at ps5 nope. are they, they going move. to step five or are they going down to step two where do they go from their their ps4 step four now they're going to ps5 where they do don't they go, go to ps5 ps5 means they get a promotion uh -huh. okay so in this particular case when we're talking about the slotting the and it, it's hard to see on here with this without the new pay structure. We would, you would see it in the new pay structure, right? So in this particular case, we would um, increase by the COLA, whatever the COLA is. So whatever that dollar amount is, we would add it to, so if you guys say it's 4%, if you say it's 5%, we're gonna add four or 5%, whatever COLA you approve to that $71,785 in a cent. Okay. Then, so we're going to add it to that. We're going to say, what's that dollar amount? And then in the new pay structure, because we index up the ranges, we are going to find the step in PS4 that is closest to, but not less than the 71,000 and change there, plus the COLA, and round them up to the next nearest step that's higher than that. And then they'll also be eligible for their merit increase at their anniversary day. So then they would go up an additional step. But what that causes, because we've moved the whole range, is that in this particular case, complete speculation, because it's really a numbers game. If they were on PS4 step four, arguably, if when we did that math, they may now be in PS4 step three when we slot them. If we add the COLA and plus round them up, I don't have, because this doesn't, this is not a chart. It's not the future chart. I can't right. map it and that the, way. And the you. pay for step three will not be this. It will be higher. Right. But, it, but they well, still went down it's still. The, new, the chart for the new right. year. Okay. Yes. So, but I'm just, just so these numbers aren't real, but I'm trying to tell you what the numbers are. So this isn't, this is only good for showing the sliding, but not the numbers. What we would do is add the COLA, whatever COLA is approved by council, to this current number, wherever they are in the step. Mm -hmm. In the new pay structure, because we'll have a new pay structure that ages all of these numbers by the COLA you all approve. We will then look for that number, but not less than, which means that most of those have to round up a little bit. So usually do an extra percent or two, not just the COLA. Then they'll be on that step. Sometimes that means they will go when we do that exercise, because the whole range grows, right, for the future pay growth. It means that they likely will be, instead of a PS4 step four, in the new pay structure of PS4 step three. But then at their anniversary date, they will also be eligible for a 3% merit increase with the step. So then they'll go back up to PS4. But that 
that is how that works for everybody. Okay, I have some more questions on that, but I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to move on to my next two questions, and then I'll just follow up with you directly. Um, can you go back to the 10-year um, slide? Not that one. The one that was like COLAs. It was CPIU and COLA. Yes, that slide. I think this is a bit of a loaded question, but for the years that... For the years that uh, Metro employees did not get their COLA, were they ever made whole for those years? And I'll put a, a, a asterisk in that, right? I understand that over the course of 10 years, it has balanced out, but for the years that they've missed, we never went back and gave to them for those years, right? We just continued paying out what we paid out over the next few years. That's a that's a hard question to answer. What I would say is um, kind of the early, to the earlier discussion. Um, I believe that's what played a role in 2015 with us doing a significantly higher COLA than what CPIU was, right? You had had, I mean, while I appreciate the transparency of saying if it's CPIU, that's what we should track with. Obviously, the charter contemplates something different. And the reality is that in, there are a lot of employees through 2009 to through 2012 that suffered a lot, right? There's a lot of economic uncertainty, a lot of people that were very scared, and a lot of people that hadn't had COLAs or merit increases, definitely not consistently. That was part of the five of the past 30. Those were four of the years that were probably the toughest for our employees, and they were not consistently done. So they absolutely, when you see, like in 2014, like you see how strange that is? that they got a 1% mid-year, and then they got a 2.5% on July 1, right? This was the city trying to see employees. They did a mid-year, like, COLA. I mean, that, that, because employees were hurting, they had been hurting really badly, and our city was starting to emerge from it, the country was, and certainly Nashville was starting to show revenues and growth that would support that. So you see, this was an attempt to start stepping out of it. So depending on who you ask, you would say, no, they didn't go back and do those years. But when you look at the history, that's much of the reason why many of these COLAs have differed over the years is while they are different than CPIU, the reality is our employees and what they had faced in those very lean years I think this was the city's attempt to adjust, and the commission has the right to do that, the mayor has the right to do that, and the council has the right to do that. And so I think those are really the reason why most of these years they don't match. And during, Councilman, during one of those years uh, for the public safety, for your police officer two, correction officer two, firefighter twos, they were asked to grant it an extra step as far as trying to catch up. It wasn't that COLAs went backwards, but to try to help with compression, uh, those classifications only receive an additional step, not uh, any type of office support, nor any trades and labor. It was specifically focused on the public safety to help remedy uh, those years where there were no increases. But for those years, public safety were not the only people that didn't get increases, right? Nobody did. Right. right. Nobody got increases, but we gave increases to make up for public safety but we didn't give that to anybody else, is what we're saying? Yes. Okay. I don't know how that's equitable, but whatever, that we can address that at another time. My, my question slash point that I'm trying to make is, COLAs were missed in 09, 2010, 2011, and 2012, right? And if we just had to say an average COLA per year, do we look at aiming for like a 3% COLA every budget, or is there is there any um number that we aim for with the cola each year no um and that's something I, I feel like i should just mention briefly like we really do go into this very independently every single year i think there there are no uh, back channel discussions about the mayor or the finance director hoping that we hit a particular number so we go into this you know we're i should say we're studying trends every month right so Leslie last spring was like, I'm seeing these CPI numbers. I'm seeing these CPI numbers. Like, 
we are keeping, and so we know it's going to start playing a role as we go into the fall. So, like, we are, mon this is a year-round job. I know you only see Leslie during this part of the year, um, but this is a year-round job. So we are we are monitoring trends, monitoring, monitoring economic indicators, filling out and getting salary results from other peer cities. So we're keeping an eye on that all the time. But when we go into this effort, especially really hard, as soon as we give these pay increases, we push the colas because that's also something our office does. We process the merit increases, a lot of which happen in July. We turn around and we immediately start working on the next pay plan. So we go into this pretty blind. And then, you know, the way I've described it is we, I, I don't really know what's going on, although they periodically have said to me this past year, hey, that CPIU is something, right? I'm just like, hey, it's, it's extraordinary. So other than that, I don't know what's going on because they are gathering data from all kinds of sources, all kinds of economic indicators. And then once we have all that data is when we start to shape what this looks like. And then we start to cost out what this looks like. Um, and that is without any conversations with finance, with the mayor's office, with anybody. So we're kind of this unknown bomb that kind of drops. <laughs> and it is a, Mike refers to it as the delicate dance. I mean, going in to have that conversation with the mayor's office and the finance director, not the most comfortable, right? And that's the first of the most uncomfortable conversations about the pay plan. So we tell them like, hey, this is what we're going to recommend. This is what our data says. And this is new recurring dollars that become the floor, right? Let me ask in a different way, Shannon. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, when we're looking at the COLA, are we looking at, are we trying to like mirror inflation? I, I would assume that no, but it's a it's a really important economic indicator for us. So, right. So if we don't, right, if I'm making this and I'm not accounting for inflation, like people should be getting their merit and their inflation, which I think is Councilmember Johnson's point is several of our points. I understand that that's very far, hard to fund. Um, but when we're not given merit and inflation, I don't understand how people are expected to keep up. So, for example, if the annual average is 8% and we are given... 4%, historically, we could be on par with this 10-year thing, but I can guarantee you I have $0 from 10 years ago. I have $0 from 9 years ago. I have $0 from 8 years ago. People buying gas today do not care that in 2015 they got a little something extra to make up for 2009, 2010, which really didn't make up for it because if you look at the amount that we did, those are we did a little bit more in several of those we didn't do a lot more and look at in 2017 it's zero right so i, I understand and I, I do understand you all's limitations because it is a delicate balance and trying to fit within budget constraints totally understand that but we are doing a disservice if we're looking at an eight percent annual average and we're only giving people four percent i just left the grocery store my groceries was six hundred dollars i could barely afford that how does somebody how are metro employees affording this I don't think I, I just think we have to find a better way to make sure that we are addressing making sure that people are getting married and they need to get their steps they need to get their cola they, they have to get both like we can't it's not an either or no I completely agree with you like our entire compensation system is based on market adjustments merit and cola and so I feel like you can't you have to have all three and that Again, there's tons of different compensation structures and philosophies that are totally legitimate. Ours, Metro, has always been for the past 30 years, this balance of market adjustments, COLA, and merit. And I feel like they all have to work together. And the years when they don't work together, it's really painful. When we don't have merit one year, it kind of collapses a little bit of our pay plan. And then not only do employees not get that much needed money that year, then there, it takes us years to dig out of that. Unions, we all agree on that. It's it's painful for everybody. So I do agree that the balance of all those three have to work together. Um, understand that the only difference I would say on the Metro Cola is here, right? Um, with the exception of the 4% that's being recommended at the bottom, which is just our recommendation. And we're right, we, like, part of our responsibility is just to recommend, and we have to do that based on data. Part of that is we didn't necessarily recommend all these other numbers. The, all the other numbers above it are what ultimately the council approved. That could be for an asunderive reasons. It might be because the council decided something higher. It might be that they, the mayor decided something higher. 
I know that a couple years those were the cases. Sometimes there's good reason. And I do think that the council, you know, uh, I remember because I was working during these years and I used to make significantly less money because I was entry level when I started here and I took a huge pay cut to come work for Metro. But during these years, it was very lean. It was lean for a lot of us, especially if you were, well, I had new babies. So when you look at these numbers, some of these increases that were happening coming out of that housing, I don't want to apologize for. I'm glad the city did it because a lot of us were really having a hard time getting by. But that's the reason why they differed. So when we get here and we look at a historical average, part of our job is to, when we come to you, be supported by data. And that's all we've done here. So while our recommendation is just a recommendation, you have the right to do more. And I don't disagree with your points. I think the council has the right to change the charter so that you guys could take away that authority. You just pass through whatever CPIU number. That's your choice. Functionally, if you guys decide as a council now, you could take that position, right? You could say, you know what? We, the majority of the Metro Council members believe that we should just adopt CPIU and make that a practice, assuming that the majority of council members get there. You didn't necessarily need a charter amendment to do that. Um, but that also means as these numbers are declining, which they are quite a bit, that you may be tied to that for next year if that's the philosophy that you have this year. But I think those are all options to you. Thank you. My last question is, looking at this chart, and I understand that it's 10 years, but the years that they didn't get COLAs was uh, per what we just said, 2009, 2010, 2011, or 2012. So if this, went, if this chart went back to 2008 to include the years that people did not get COLAs, are we still on point with the CPIU? My guess would be no. Because so can we get that data so that we can, can we have a chart that includes that so that we can see how far off we are? Huh? Our esteemed legal counsel is writing that down, so I have a feeling Thank we you, can. Chair. I have a feeling Hold we can. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think some of those numbers you may have gotten, we may have supplied those last year. We can certainly refresh them, but we'll try to get those to you. I think we're good. She's writing down quite a bit, so if anybody's requested anything that you couldn't provide, she'll probably send you an email shooting it to you. So. Um, I don't see any other hands up right now. I did have one question, and we've been talking about COLA a lot, but I think my concern is the Budget chair, I'm always concerned about the employees who are at the lowest end of the pay scale because I've, if you make $140,000 a year, I'm not concerned about you eating or paying your rent or, you know, making sure your kids have clothes. So when I used to work at the state, I remember there were people working in 10 care uh, or other departments that were on 10 care because they weren't making enough money. These are the type of people that I'm most concerned about. And so um, I don't know if you could provide the lowest paid employees kind of across the board so I can kind of see what entry level employees are making. Uh, I've, I've met with quite a few department heads and several of them talk about how they have employees that do similar jobs as other departments, but they're making 20% lower on an entry level than other departments are making. And they say they lose employees to other departments just after six months or a year because they see a job is opened up in Metro and they can go to that job. These are the things that I'm concerned about because I want all departments to have employees that come in, start and stay. Because if you're just retraining the same employees, you know, from human rights, that's just terrible. You know, it's not good, not good policy. So if you could provide me. Well, I can answer some of those questions now. And I think we can. Um, one thing that I'm very proud of that Metro government has done is the living wage part. Um, so all full-time employees receive a living wage. We propose a living wage. I am required to propose a living wage. So no full-time employees that are covered under these pay plans are earning less than a living wage. We do get those metrics specifically for Davidson County. So this isn't some academic number that averages another. We definitely look at Davidson County. This year, um, we increased the living wage, and for a number of years, it stayed stagnant because we were well ahead of it. That has not been the case the past couple of years. So there is no employee in this that are covered on these pay plans working full time that will be paid less than $18.50 an hour. That is the living wage for Davidson County. Um, that equates to $41,000. I, 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 I think if you call that a living wage, that's not much of a living wage. It's so. not, but I'll tell you, I, it's a lot better than a lot of other employers. So. That is the minimum that anybody makes. The annual, I apologize, I cut you off. I think it's 41,000 and change. I think so. Is that 18, is that 1850? Mm -hmm. okay. For a full time. 
And then I would say um, any department that feels as though they are um, being paid less for the same functions and are losing employees, we reach out to departments every single at the beginning of this pay PAM process. So summertime, we say departments, are we having any issues? And this is their opportunity to say, yes, we have got an issue. I could see this happening for one of two reasons. Um, if the employees are not properly classified in their departments, then departments need to engage us so we can make sure we do a job audit and get them properly classified. Um, that's one. Two, if they work for elected officials, those employees that are not covered by our pay plans are not required to be part of our pay plans, may also be paid anything that the elected official wants. And so as a result, some elected officials have chosen to pay higher and either they have the budgetary dollars to do it or they keep a vacancy or two, divide out parts of those salaries and spread those across their existing employees, which as non-civil service, they are allowed to do. So to the extent that there are any department heads, whether they're elected officials or regular Metro departments, if they feel like that's happening, please, 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 please tell them to reach out to us because we want to help them get it right. We want, we don't want internal inequities. With well, our and, I, and I think that they do need to reach out to you because if that's a concern and they're not reaching out, then that's a concern to me that they're bringing it up to me and not you. So we I ask think. every single year at the beginning of the pay plan process. So that in case we need to grab studies and stuff, we can't. Member Van Rees, you recognize. Yeah, I just wanted to, for the record, uh, some numbers. 1850 an hour is about 38K a year. So that's 37.62 take home. So an affordable uh, living would be 1,254. That's for rent plus utilities. So at 1850 an hour, then you're qualifying for 60% affordable housing apartment. Council member Porterfield, you recognize. Thank you, Chair. I'll try to make this my last one. Um, so 38, thank you, Council member Van Rees. So 38K a year. Um, didn't we recently see something that said it's like cost of living in Nashville is like seventy thousand a year now? I, I know we, I know it will be a struggle to get people to seventy thousand a year, so that's not what I'm suggesting. But I, I don't, I, I hear you when we're saying the living wage, but I don't know too many people that can live off of thirty eight thousand a year. So I guess how are we qualifying that as a living wage? Like what what are the metrics that we're looking at to make that a living wage? We use the MIT living wage calculator. Okay. And that's certainly, you know, if there's something we'll reevaluate, making sure that you're using the right metric. But we have traditionally used the MIT living wage calculator. And then that allows us to drill down to Davidson County. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. All right. We've gone over a lot. Um, yes, we have. So we've got a lot to talk about coming up next week. So. Um, we're kind of getting close to the end and I don't see any other hands and, uh, Shannon, thank you so much for you and your staff coming down. Uh, I know you've had to answer a lot of questions and I appreciate it. Um, Thursday we have, we're going over the excess, uh, of the, um, uh, fund balances and, um, NDOT was here today and they were going to kind of, I think they've given me a list of items that they have for every district on what we might be looking at, uh, possibly, uh, in the excess, if we go that route. Um, and so we can have those discussions and, um, director Flannery is going to be here on Thursday to give her presentation. Is that correct? Yeah. She's shaking. Oh, it's four o'clock on Thursday. Transportation's tomorrow. So we have, uh, we have crosstalk on, but that's okay. Uh, no, so someone brought up the infrastructure and transportation meeting. That's tomorrow. What time is that? I apologize. At four, it's at four o'clock. And then the budget uh, work session uh, with the director Flannery is Thursday at four o'clock here in this room. So tomorrow's upstairs. Thursday is down here. So um, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And then we, next week, if I... What, Ms. Darby, do you know next week where we do we have any work yeah. sessions next week? I know we've got yeah. it's yeah. on. We have a schedule. We have um, uh, we're meeting on um, June 8th, 12th, and 13th are the next meetings. So next week, what days are those next week? Do we know? I don't have, I have to look on my calendar. I should have it in my brain. I should have it in my brain by now, but we've got so much. 
Thursday is June 8th, so just one meeting next week, okay. and then the next ones are Monday, June 12th, and Tuesday, June 13th, and then we have uh, another one scheduled if necessary. Okay. And then the June, what days did I got to have the substitute in? I need to know that day. June 14th. So June 14th. So we're going to be doing a lot of work before June 14th so I can get all this uh, in a document that uh, y'all all love, and we'll just uh, hold it and cuddle it and like a little baby. And, and not amend it. That's the that's the goal. Not that much. Look, she's already raised her hand. I'm amending it now. I'm just kidding. I have a whole substitute chair. No, I'm joking. Um, can we put? And I don't know if this has already been done or not. But the day that the final wish list is due is the day after the public hearing, and it is due at right at like 4:30 or something. Can we push that time back because the minority caucus is going to meet the day after the public hearing so that we can um, amend our wish list based on what we're hearing from people in the community? But we got to give people time to get off of work to yeah. actually come to the meeting. No, I understand. And I'm hoping I'm hoping all of y'all will be speaking to all the people out in the community. You know, try not to give me 4,000, you know, two hours before I'm supposed to have my substitute in. You know, at least give us a... Because you all, we're all hearing the same thing. I don't think we're hearing anything. We all know what we're hearing. So I hope everybody, if you have a recommendation... Please try to get me a reasonable recommendation. You know, I have to take money from somewhere else. When you give, when you take money, you've got to take it from somewhere else. And so you always have to go look and what's that, what's that being taken from. So that's the kind of stuff that I just hope you will give me a little time and vice chair and everybody who's working on this so that when we submit it, it, it looks like it was done reasonably and not. And uh, there's several people in this room who've had to do this before, you know. So uh, look, Councilman Brown is shaking her head up and down. Yeah, she completely understands. And, Councilmember Toombs had to leave, but she understands, and uh, so Vice Chair, I had to. Yeah, I understand you had to. Too. Yeah, yeah. If we could just so. get just uh, just push the time back on that same day, not asking for a day extension, but if we could just submit it just a little bit later, that'll give us time for a work session. Okay. And I also want to say that I'm not thrilled that um, Councilmember Benedict and Councilmember Allen got special shout outs. Like I think I deserve a special shout out to Councilmember Roten. Yeah. So is find your, something nice is to today say. Today your me. birthday? No, it was May six. Oh, it was May six. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank was that you. 27? Was it? Did you turn 27? I did, it was the anniversary of my 27th birthday. That's what I Thank thought you. it was. Thank you. 27 <laughs> is what I thought. Looking looking younger every year. So you're welcome. So, uh, all right. We've, we've, this has gotten deep now. All right. Anything else? Seeing no hands, we're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.